Okay, today we want to talk about the need for parents to talk with their children, their teenage children, about sex. Uh, in previous generations, um, parents were very inhibited and very reluctant to talk about sex with their adolescent children, their teenage children. This may have been partly or even largely due to uh, religious inhibitions and uh, the approach Christianity took to sex for many centuries being so sexually pessimistic and, and so hatred of, 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 the, of the senses, uh, of any type of pleasurable sensory sensual experience, even within marriage. So hopefully parents can get past that. Uh, nowadays, you know, parents are not talking with their children about sex in their teenage years, not because of these inhibitions, but because they're basically just handing it off and assuming that the schools are doing the uh, educating on sex uh, for them. You know, the parents are off the hook because schools have taken over sex ed. So in prior generations, parents were too inhibited to talk about uh, sex with their teenage children. Nowadays, parents are just assuming the schools are doing it and they just don't want to be bothered with it. But parents really do need to get involved. And this is especially true uh, of Christian parents. I mean, people that are claiming to be Christian have got to get involved uh, because all the problems that are coming from teenage sexuality, teens, you know, becoming sexually active and, you know, promiscuous at, at young ages and all the problems that come from that, the emotional harm that's done, uh, all the sexually transmitted infections that they're, they're getting, the unplanned, unwanted pregnancies, the abortions, um, the uh, teenage moms having to raise children, et cetera, et cetera. So parents, you got to get involved, everyone, but especially Christians, you know, stop mouthing your faith in Jesus if that's all you're going to do. Get up off the stick and talk with your children, get involved. Um, have us, you know, you can present a sex positive message to your teenage children as you talk about sex with them. And you can, you know, make your remarks and the topics you talk about, the specifics geared towards uh, what's appropriate for their age. Obviously, when you talk to a 12 or 13 year old, you're not going to maybe talk about some of the same specifics in depth that you would when your son or daughter is 16 or 17. But, you know, give age appropriate remarks and instruction and get the communication going at, at, a, at a fairly early age, I would say, maybe by like 10 or 11 or 12 years old. It's important to build that rapport with your teenage children. So what I would recommend is set aside some time with your children, with your sons and daughters, and deal with them individually. But when you talk to your individual son or your daughter, talk with them with you know both you and your spouse, both the father and the mother need to be involved. So when your daughter Susie or Jennifer is at the appropriate age, both the husband and slash father and the wife slash mother need to be involved in the talk. I, I think that that's important. The flip side is also important. When your son Tommy's at a, a, the appropriate age, both the father and the mother need to talk with them together. Both parents in the same conversation. Why do I say that? Because you think, well, maybe the son might be a little nervous or embarrassed talking about things when the mother's when his mother's in the room. Uh, similarly, the daughter might be a little bit uh, inhibited or you know afraid to open up and, and ask questions or, or discuss things if her father's in the room. It's important that both parents are in the conversations. Uh, we've seen the type of problems that come when there's only one parent buying into this, when there's only a one parent in the household, uh, we see the increased incidence of all these problems, teenage promiscuity, much greater when there's a, from single parent households. So even when both parents are in the household, they need to be in the conversations. That's what I want to stress. And you can make the conversation sex positive. So sex is a good thing, but it's best saved for marriage. And you can tell your kids why. These, 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 these teenage kids these days are not stupid. They're greatly affected by peer pressure and they're being indoctrinated by what's going on in the schools, but they're not stupid. They're hungering for parental input on many of the different issues that they face, uh, sex not being the least of it. So, you know, give a sex positive message to your children that sex is a good thing between a husband and wife. It's best saved for marriage and you want to avoid it went before you're married because of all these problems you know it, it's just it's just too much of a downside uh, when you engage in it at too young an age 
and, and outside marriage. So you can present a sex positive marriage, sex positive message to them. It's best to say uh, sex for marriage. And you can take their questions. You can build this ongoing communication uh, over the years, starting at, again, like 10, 11, 12 years old. Have periodic talks. Don't just talk to them once and then think you're good for a couple of years. They're constantly being bombarded with messages to go have sex or, you know, everything that's on the TV you know, or many of the things they watch and exposed to are dealing with sex outside of marriage. And you need to counter that message because what, what's going on in the sex ed in the schools is an amoral slash immoral message that doesn't really teach responsibility, doesn't teach your children that they can have self-control and that they can wait until they're married. Um, I think that's the wrong message coming from the schools. You know, don't try to have any self-control. Work with your children as parents. Okay, um, and that's really about it. Uh, you know, talk with your uh, children early. Uh, give them age-appropriate comments. You know, as they get older, you can deal with more specifics. Be open to their questions. Uh, both parents should be in these conversations, so it, it, con it, it conveys to your son. And then when you talk with your daughter, it conveys to your children that both their father and mother buy into this and are concerned for them and that they should feel free to talk with either parent. I mean, sometimes the daughter's actually more comfortable talking with certain things uh, with her father and not her mother. And sometimes the son may be more comfortable opening up with some of the problems or concerns uh, that he's facing in this area of sexuality with his mother rather than his father. So if you're both in the room, you can foster that open communication with your children such that if they need to seek out one of you uh, alone, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be the daughter always going to the mother. if She's more comfortable uh, opening up uh, and being honest uh, with her father. And a similar with, her, with the son, if he's more comfortable going and talking with his mother on certain issues of this, um, it's good that she was there early on in the conversations. And so he knows that uh, he can approach her. So keep it positive, but talk with your children. Don't rely on the schools. What they're getting from the schools is not helping. All right. Thanks.